trying to regenerate that power is next to impossible. I don't have an extra battery with the Blue Eddy here. This is inside. I've probably got like 1600 amps. Oh, isn't that nice to do that? How long? Obviously, more wattage, you're gonna charge faster. A thousand watts of solar on the roof. I've started both at about 20%. I think the Jackery's on 19%. Oh, yeah. Is that the whole So will these larger power pack units run your caravan? So I spent the last couple of weeks out caravaning over Christmas and New Year's and took these two units with me to see if I could do exactly that and power my van completely off grid with either one of these power packs. So I've got the Bluetti AC200L here and I've also got the Jackery 2000 Plus and these are actually expandable with larger batteries you can add more batteries to these and then use a cable to join them together i've got a 600 amp lithium system in my caravan with a big inverter and stuff that's all uh victron gear that's in that and the lsp uh, batteries as well so i bypassed that system that's in it and then ran these two through the caravan as if I was plugging into say a caravan site. That's how I plugged into these, running everything through the van from the microwave, the air conditioner, all the lights, all the power sockets, and running everything through one of these units. So testing each one out at a time and then regenerating that power during the day with the solar. So we camped down here on the uh, Mile River. It's a pretty nice spot down here, but been running the Blue Eddy and the Jackery pretty much bypassing the power that I have in the van and running everything through those two units and just switching between both of them and then putting the solar out and running them and see if you can actually run off both those units. So it's uh, it's all good to have all this power, but if you can't put it back, it's pretty tough. So 174 watts going in. It's currently about oh, 10 a.m. Got both 100 watt solar saga panels out so 200 watt max but not a bad spot but we'll see how the jackery goes completely depleted it with the air conditioner last night so top units on five percent bottom ones on four percent input saying 26 hours but that's obviously perfect conditions if it gets the power that it needs so yeah, this setup for the average person just camping would be perfect, but when you want to deplete the whole thing in a day, it's really hard to put it back. But if you're not running an aircon on a caravan, you could definitely use this all week long. The thing is, is trying to run things like an AC all night and then trying to regenerate that power is next to impossible unless you have a massive solar system or solar array to put the power back. Okay, so we're gonna look at the Bluetti AC200L, some of the features on the front of it. So on the front here, you've got pretty much all your outlets and everything and all your charging is done via the side of the unit. So up here, you've got your power button. As you can see, I'm on 1%. So I do like that power button. It's kind of nice, it's um, nice stainless sort of button, you got your LCD screen just here as well. Green ring, lights up around the outside, 1%. Got all your functions on here, AC input, AC output, DC input, DC output as well. Here you've got a cigarette socket, so 12 volt, 10 amps. Here you have a 48 volt, 8 amp socket just there. Um, down here you've got USB-C, 100 watt, output for your laptops and stuff two usb a's five volt three amp so you got two of them and another usb c 100 watt and then here you've got your ac 230 volts 2400 watts so it's a 2400 watt inverter in this unit so you've got four of them just there as well pure sine wave inverter okay so bluetti 92 percent pure sine wave inverter 2400 watts I don't know if this should make a difference. So I've got my pressure washer here, 2100 watts. I was just washing the wheels 
uh, trying to deplete the batteries in here so I can give you guys an accurate uh, vehicle charging rate. But listen to this. And look at the watts. Okay, that's, you can hear the, the sound of the pressure washer. So I'll pull it out of that, 1400 watts. Move over to the Jackery. How much nicer that sounds. And only 500 watts. So I don't really understand that. I've tried it in each one of the AC outputs, in all of them, and that's exactly how it sounds. The Bluetti versus the Jackery. But we'll just, we'll pull it out. We'll plug it into this one. You can hear the difference in the pressure washer. How weird it sounds. So someone can explain that whether it's to do with the watts or the, the inverters in these things, but the Jackery inverter to me sounds better. Very, very strange. There is no charge pad on the top, which I would have liked to have seen a charge pad on the top of this thing, but unfortunately that's not the case. Um, so yeah, you've just got a basic flat top, two handles uh, coming around the side. It is a bit of a tank, this thing too. It is, it is pretty heavy. I'll let you know the details on how heavy it is here shortly. DC PV input. So they've gone to this new screw style fitting which is basically this plug here. So it's a new screw, screw in fitting, which I don't mind. Um, stops the cables falling out by accident, things like that. And then down here you have your AC input. It's a screw fitting as well. Awesome spot, chilling here watching the boats go past. Bloody good spot. So yeah, so with the, with the batteries on this thing, so you can add, a, there's a few different of the Bluetti range you can add just in their manual here. You can add the B3, B300 expansion battery uh, the B210 expansion battery, the B230 expansion battery, and you can go up to 8,192 watt hours. So that's absolutely massive for this unit to expand on all those batteries. So pr pretty big um, way of expanding this thing, um, which is similar to what you can do with the other unit, like the Jackery, you can expand that, I think up to five of those uh, battery packs so but I'll double check that when we go over the features on that one so the unit weighs 28.3 kilograms so it's yeah close to 30 kilos of uh of weight there to try and lug around so you can definitely feel the weight of it but I just think just the the fit and finish of this thing is just feels a little bit better than the Jackery uh, the Jackery's got like a big split mark down the center as to where it's actually like the cases put together and stuff but I'll show you that on that when we get to looking at that one you got a vent here on this side as well just letting the thing cool down and on the bottom on the bottom you've got some big big rubber feet just there so yeah definitely not a not a light unit but again with the capacity 2400 watt inverter MPPT and everything built in you're getting a lot in this unit and it's close to about 170 amp hour battery uh, with a 2400 watt inverter. So if you took all those items that you'd normally put in a four wheel drive or a canopy and reduced them down like similar to like this and put them just in this unit, it's pretty compact. So the cables it comes with, you've got your, it goes to, I forget what this, this cable's called, but it goes from the, the DC, so your PV, kind of input your, your solar input basically to this connector and then they give you a PV PV connector to that so if you get online you can get a bunch of different cables that'll make this work to be able to charge this from your 50 amp Anderson just plugged into the truck through the PV setup that I've got here so you can do this you can charge it from your vehicle Right now it's charging at 103 watts if you want to charge it from an Anderson. You're just going to have to set up a combination of cables that's going to work for you uh, to make it charge through the, uh, the DC outlet here on the side. So, because that's what I was doing, I was going to the back to the PV connectors, then back to an Anderson, then I can charge this through the vehicle, um, basically simulating that I was charging it via solar, but it was charging via the vehicle. So you've got those two cables. There's the pretty much completely useless car charging port that would take... 
10 generations to charge the unit, so that's useless. Um, but then you've got your 240 plug here as well. You can do everything from the app as well. So you can turn the, the outlets on, turn the AC outlet on. You can see everything coming in. You can see the, the solar coming in, grid power, and you can see what's also going out, which is really cool. And then you can also turn the unit off from here as well. You can hear the things clicking inside. Turn it off. But I like it that whenever I walk past the Blue Eddy, it just connects straight away. It's not like a, yeah, it's not a delayed reaction or, so it's good battery information and stuff there as well on the app. So yeah, and then you can update um, the software from the app too. Radio, the Jackery 2000 Explorer Plus. So this unit I actually used this in America. Um, obviously pretty much the same version but it was a little bit different because this is the Australian version but the American one had some different features that I was hoping would be on this one but unfortunately they're not so we'll go over this unit this is the Jackery unit as you can see the the fit and finish is pretty good um, but see this big split down through here or it's like I don't know if it's a split or it's a molding mark um, I just think that the Blue Eddy is just a little bit nicer finished um, just with the materials they use but it doesn't take away from the Jackery and 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 what I think of it um, it's still a really really good great unit I do have the expansion battery here as well that they've sent me with the Jackery so we'll just go over um, basically look at the look at the features of the unit first so got your power button just here um, but here like I was mentioning about the Blue Eddy unit see the Wi-Fi Bluetooth is now function it's now flashing it only lasts for a certain period of time, then it clicks off. So then you've got to either turn the unit back on and off or um, get that to come back up so you can connect to it. Um, where the Blue Eddy unit just, you just, when you go past the unit, it just connects straight away. So I do like that function, but I don't like these. I don't like these covers. I've got no fingernails at all. So I cut them off. You can't get these out without grabbing something. I'll use the, uh, I'll use the power cord here without using something to flick those out. So yeah, that's one part of this I do not like. I like the Blue Eddy ones better. You've got your DC port here, which is 12 volt, 10 amps, USB-A, 18 watt max. You've got two of them and then two USB-Cs, 100 watt max, so pretty much the same as Blue Eddy. Got your button here to turn that on and off. You can control all this from the app as well. Turn that off there. Then you've got your three AC ports here on the front. Just hold that button down, it should turn them on, there you go, uh, you don't have to hold that down, sorry, you just press it. Got three AC ports here, now this has a 3000 watt inverter, uh, the capacity is this is just slightly less than what the Blue Eddy is, so I think it's like 6 watt hours different, so bugger all really. But this one in America here has like a, I think it was a 30 amp plug or a Whatever their plug is over there for their RVs, they have a big plug here. I'd love to see if, if we could get a 15 amp plug for caravans so you don't have to use that other section um, to go from 10 amp to 15 amp. It'd be great if that was built into the, into the face of this. So I was just using my um, 10 amp, 15 amp lead connector to go straight into the front of this unit which worked completely fine just turning around the unit this feels lighter and it is slightly lighter than the blue eddy i think this is 27 point something 27.9 kilograms so 27.9 kilograms this unit is um, i do like that the the battery can just sit on top the expansion battery it's nice and same profile and everything coming around the side here you've got vents on the side you've got these big grab handles um, I do like this, it's got wheels, so it does have wheels on the side and also a handle that uh, retracts right up so you can just walk around with it, which I wish the Blue Eddy had. That would be really nice if it did have that. And all your charge ports are at the back. So for the DC inputs, the charging max is 1400 watts you can put into this unit, which is a massive amount. There's that handle that I showed you there before, just extends up. so. Turn the unit back around, so it's got vents on both sides. But yeah, these are, these things are a little bit of a, a little bit of a tank. So, but again, you've got that massive capacity that you don't have to have all the stuff like I do here in the F truck. 
So on this unit, it's saying 4,000 cycles to 70% capacity uh, on the 2,000 plus. So that's a fair bit that you're going to get out of this unit, and that's a lot of a lot of camping, a lot of caravan camping for this one. Uh, Life PO4 batteries in this thing as well, so same chemistry that's in the Bluetti. The plugs and stuff that come with the Jackery are your AC plug that you get for charging at home. Then you have the vehicle vehicle charging cable, which again, completely useless, unless you're gonna drive for a week to charge it. So there's your vehicle, just goes into one of the barrel connectors. So like I mentioned, you can Frankenstein some stuff up from online that you can get to go from a barrel connector to an Anderson. Hopefully Jackery's gonna have these available on the website soon, which these are the demo units they've sent me. Barrel connector to an Anderson. Would love to see Anderson permanently installed in the Jackery unit and also the Bluetti unit. So these don't come with it. These are demos that I've been sent to test out. So you've got those two cables and then you've got these two uh, here which are for your solar if you choose to buy the 100 watt solar panels, uh, solar saga panels from Jackery as well. Okay, so just plugged into the Jackery. Just letting it do its thing and figure out what it wants to do there, but looking at about, it's about the same, I'm thinking, 110 watts. So yeah, around that, around that 110 watt mark, the way I've got that connected is through both of these cables that Jackery has made me, these two Andersons. They should be available in February, Jackery's told me, to a splitter, and to that bottom Anderson there, so. And this Anderson's coming from the alternator of the truck. So you can do it. 110 watts. I'll get onto the app. Um, I downloaded the app when I was in America recently. As you can see, I've got the Explorer Plus just there, but I have the US version. And you can see it does have that bigger plug there on the front of it. So let's see if it connects to it. So we're right beside the unit right now, but unless those lights are flashing, it won't connect where the Bluetti does. So the Bluetti's still over there, so device offline. So I that's a feature I don't like. I wish that no matter where I was, if I was walking around camp and I wanted to check what the power was, what the power was doing in the Jackery, that I could just connect to it and check it. It doesn't do that, unfortunately. And we'll just check if we can connect to the AC200L. It's already found it. I can press the button and I'm connected. So I do like that about the Bluetti, that I can just connect to whenever I'm walking past. Unlike the Jackery, you have to basically cycle the unit, or there may be some double press function that I haven't found out about yet to get the Wi-Fi and stuff to come back up. We'll go back to the Jackery app now. You'll see the, the little icons just there, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi flashing. So if, now if I go to the it's going to find it and then we have it it's up on the thing now so and you can i'm pretty sure you can update the unit here as well firmware upgrades this is all up to the latest version anyway so yeah and you can control outlets here as well which is really nice if you want to turn something off but if you had this you're probably not going to put this in your caravan it's probably going to be out underneath your awning or under the wheel arches or something that is not a function I like, is that it doesn't connect. So if I'm laying in bed for a couple of hours, I've got the AC running in the van, and I wanna turn this thing off or cut the AC power to the van, I can't do it um, from the app, because once that disconnects, once it stops flashing, I won't be able to connect to it again unless I get back up and either press this function or if I walk away from the unit, it's gonna disconnect again. So, where the Bluetti one, we'll try and connect to the Bluetti again. So we'll just, we'll get completely out of the Bluetti app. Connect to the Bluetti app. Bang, AC200L. We're connected again straight away. So I really like that about the Bluetti. So hopefully Jackery can, that's just gonna be a software thing. So hopefully they can update that and yeah, whenever you walk past the unit, you'll connect to it. 
So the expansion batteries with the Jackery unit are basically the same capacity. So you're getting the same battery that you are in this thing. So you're looking at 170, roughly 170 amp hours of 12 volt power out of this thing. And then you're gonna get the same out of the expansion battery as well. So that is a lot of power that you're gonna have uh, that's gonna run you on basic sort of camping needs. That's gonna run you for close to a couple of weeks if you're just running a fridge and things like that. Um, and got a couple of solar panels plugged in. So the, the Jackery and the expansion battery could definitely see you right through a few weeks of actual camping. No drama at all with a couple of panels just to uh, keep it topped up. Okay, so I've got the Jackery plugged into the van. So this is obviously mimicking as if you'd pulled up at the caravan park and you've plugged your van into sort of 240 power. But obviously the Jackery is supplying the power so I've depleted both of these units I haven't got the top unit connected right now this is the cable that connects them together so as you can see that's on five percent we completely drained these the other night together and I've just been over the past two days been recharging the uh, just the this 2000 unit by itself so we'll turn the AC on now and we'll see how many watts it draws you can see there the out, output see how high it'll go up so the AC on the van is drawing about a thousand watts while it's running and under the current load that it's on will give you 0.8 hours. So obviously if you had both of these fully charged up to a hundred, you'd get um you'd get all night out of it like we did the other night. It was really good to run that the AC all night. So these two units paired together will be about 340 amp hours uh, when you link them together with the the big cable here so 340 amp hours of 12 volt power is what you'll get out of these units um, obviously this is a 2042 watt hours 2042 watt hours with the expansion battery on top again if you're gonna do this with an air conditioner and you're gonna pull these sort of loads from it it's gonna be really hard to to put this power back in this unit but that's why I'm out here this weekend. Beautiful spot here on the river. Testing these units and seeing what you can actually, how much power you can suck from them, what you can actually run in your caravan. So yeah, you can run an aircon, but it's just, biggest factor is gonna be putting the energy back into this thing once it's completely depleted. So we'll disconnect the Jackery now and we'll move over to the Bluetti uh, AC200L and we'll see how it goes and what sort of wattage it's putting out with the uh, aircon. Okay, so the compressor on the caravan is just starting to cycle now. So we've got 1,129 watts. So it was fluctuating around that 1,100 watts on both both the Jackery and the Bluetti units. So and as you can see here, we've got 0 0.7 hours till basically till it's empty. So if you just want to use this unit separate from your caravan. Uh, just to cool down the van over night time and then replenish this with the, with the solar during the day That's something you could totally do is to basically yeah, just cool your caravan down before you go to bed uh, With the power let it run until this thing obviously clicks off And yeah, you could cool the van down. That's what we've basically been doing But the Jackery did pretty much go all night with the extra battery I don't have an extra battery with the Bluetti here. This is this is all they've sent me the AC200L but you can add expansion batteries to this as well. Between both of them, the Bluetti and the Jackery, I ran them on the AC function, and we also ran them on the dry function on the on the air conditioner, basically taking the humidity out of the van. And it didn't really make a difference to the power consumption. It was pretty much the same regarding both units. Okay, so in regards to solar, got a 100 watt red arc panel out there. So I'm gonna use the red arc panel for both units to determine how uh, how quick they can charge. I've started both at about 20%. I think the Jackery's on 19%. So I started this a little while ago, about half an hour ago. So it's at 30% right now and it's saying it's fluctuating. So obviously 100 watt red arc panel, it's on 94 watts, which is pretty good. So it's saying about seven and a half hours to charge it off 100 watts. Now, if you had 400 watts of solar, obviously it's going to drop dramatically on how long it's going to take to charge this. So the Bluetti had a uh, connection from the panel, PV connectors, and then their DC sort of solar connector. 
to the unit. I've got Anderson straight from the panel to Anderson on this test lead Jackery sent me, which I'll now plug into the back of the Jackery unit. Again, making it fair, 100 watt, 100 watt panel on both. The, the hours are dropping, we'll see how far it goes down. But I'm thinking the Jackery may be taking longer than what the Blue Eddy does to charge. Well, what it what it's calculating it to charge at. Again, capacity is only six more on the Blue Eddy. So we're still dropping there. But again, the more watts you put onto these units, the better. I'm just doing with an even 100 watts on uh, both units. 26 hours. So the Jackery is going to take longer to charge on a 100 watt panel same panel roughly the same amount of connections I think one less than what we did with the Bluetti but the Bluetti is actually stating that it's going to charge faster than what the Jackery will so regardless of what unit you choose whether it's the Jackery or the Bluetti these are great units for camping in my opinion uh, especially if you're just going to have a few solar panels out you're going to do basic camping fine to run the odd blender off it or if you want to run uh, an induction cooktop for a, for a little bit to cook some lunch and stuff but if you're going to run an AC or something all night you need to be able to put that power back so you're going to have to have a serious solar solar array to put the power back in this thing each day that you use it and if you get a cloudy day it's probably going to be really hard to do that so it was really good over Christmas New Year's to kind of get the van out I haven't had the caravan out since we got back from our trip uh, from the Northern Territory so it was good to get it out and put these two units I suppose in that position of having a full inbuilt caravan system and if I think that someone that doesn't want to put a full install in their van but wants the versatility of maybe retrofitting something like this into an older van maybe cutting a a port out on the side of their van boxing it in and actually having one of these units permanently installed into one of their caravans how would I think it would go for that so these two units here uh, getting up into some of the larger range of solar power stations that Jackery and Bluetti make. Um, there is other companies like EcoFlow and a few others that are entering the market but still in their, their kind of early stages of entering Australia. So Jackery's kind of just hit hit the hit the Australian market last year. Bluetti's been around for a few years now. I first reviewed one of Bluetti's products back in say 2000. 2020 I think it was that I reviewed the first Bluetti product that they sent me and they've come a long way since since that unit So I suppose wrapping up my final thoughts on the Jackery compared to the Bluetti Basically the the biggest pro with these things is obviously portability and taking them wherever you want to use them here there wherever so as in the portability aspect, I mean, both these units are getting up to around the 30 kilo mark. I think they're um, like 20, around 28 kilos they are. And that's a lot of weight to be lifting up and lugging every day. Like if you're into deadlifts, then, then sure, if you want to do that sort of thing. The Jackery has great portability with its wheels and its handle on the back, where the Bluetti, you have to physically pick it up every time you want to move the unit. The fit and finish on both of these units, I think that the... Bluetti just feels better constructed, just the materials that have been used and the way that it's finished off. All these rubber uh, sockets and stuff that cover the unit, I think just give it a, a more premium feel compared to the Jackery. Not to the say that the Jackery is a bad unit, but I would just like to see an IP rating on both of these units. I recently reviewed one of the Bluetti units. Um, I think it was the AC60 and B80 battery. I could actually leave that in the rain and not be worried about it. I would like to see those ratings done on bigger units like this because the smaller units are portable, so you can just pick them up and put them out of the weather if you need to, but it's great that they're actually thinking in that direction. Like you would have a generator at the caravan park or if you're out camping, most people with a caravan have a generator sometimes. Being able to just leave this in the rain and not be fussed about running back to get it and putting it under your van or your car and, and getting it out of the weather, I would like to see in the future these bigger units, because they are so heavy, have an IP rating as well. It's kind of hard. I do like the Bluetti and all the rubber sockets that they do have on the unit that cover all the outlets. In saying that, 
the Jackery with its wheel situation, it's got wheels on the back, it's got a handle so you can extend that handle right up. You can wheel the unit around wherever you're using it, caravan park, camping, whatever, around the house. So if you do have a bad back, I'd probably go with the Jackery because it's a lot easier to use and move around. Um, you get the Bluetti, you're going to have to deadlift this thing, possibly with, uh, with two people, one on each side might not be so bad, but if you're just by yourself, then probably go with the Jackery if you do have any of those back issues and you want something a bit bit easier to move. 3000 watt inverter versus 2400 watt inverter. Do I think that's a big thing? Maybe if you're running home appliances and you're trying to run more things from home off it, if you're in a, a power outage situation. So this could obviously run more because it's got a bigger inverter in it, but the capacity is pretty much the same. I mean, you're looking at six, six watt hours, I think it is. Yeah, six watt hours of difference between both of the, uh, the units. So there's not much difference in the actual time you're gonna get to use it unless you go with the expansion batteries and expand that. But 3000 watt inverter versus 2400, I haven't found any situation that I think that I needed to go to a bigger inverter when I was using the Bluetti. Uh, aside from the Jackery, so yeah, I mean in my F truck I have a 2600 watt and a drive inverter and that does everything I need it to do for camping and off-grid sort of stuff. I think it's just if you're doing things at home and you're running multiple devices at home, then maybe go with the 3000 watt in the Jackery. So as far as the biggest issue I see with both of these units is replacing that energy once it's gone. That's what I struggled with when I was using them is, although we were using pretty high powered appliances, I was going fully charged all the way down to zero and then I was bypassing my solar to recharge these things. So if you've got a big solar system on your caravan, uh, then that could be your solution for that to recharge these during the day. But if you're just running basic sort of appliances, maybe the odd air fryer every now and again or induction cooktop, they'd be absolutely fine. You shouldn't have any issues there doing that whatsoever. So the biggest issue is just replacing that energy. So you, you could definitely not use this. Uh, you could not use the Jackery or the Bluetti to run your AC all night and then charge during the day with a couple of solar panels on the ground. It's just not gonna happen from, from what I was trying to do anyway. You would need a big array on the roof of your caravan with a socket at the back and then you could just plug these directly into that socket and run like a thousand watts of solar into it or 800 watts of solar. You're gonna need that high solar input to recharge these things because it's all good to take the power but putting it back is the biggest issue. So all the power stations are talking in watt hours now. Uh, again, when you buy a 12 volt battery, it's kind of the amp hours that we all want to know because we, here in Australia, we've always been calculating our appliances, our fridges, camp lights, as to what, how many amps they draw through 12 volt. So with these, they're done off watt hours because they're more designed to run 240 appliances. Even though they can do both, you can still run your fridge and stuff off here with a cigarette socket and those sorts of things. But they are, as you can see, four outlets of AC connection. They're more designed to run your 240 appliances, but can still be used for camping. So you're looking around that 170 amp hours of power to 12 volt. So then you can convert it. If you just get on Google, you can do the conversions easy. When you convert watt hours to 12 volt, it's very easy to do all the conversions on there. There's different calculators and stuff you can get on Google to do that if you want. But both of these units, around 170 amp hour um, life PO4 battery inside. So they both come with a five year warranty. Uh, the Jackery, you get a three year warranty, but then if you buy directly off the website, their official website, you'll get the extra two years, bringing it up to five years in comparison to where the Bluetti is five years straight from when you purchase from Bluetti, a straight five years as well. So great warranty on both of these units. If you have a drama, I recently had an issue with an EB3A that I got from Bluetti. Uh, the BMS had failed inside that. So I sent that back to Bluetti. Uh, they paid for the postage and everything. They shipped it back, new BMS in it, and the unit's working great. So I can't really fault Bluetti on the warranty. Again, that was a unit they sent me probably about a year ago that I was using and it failed. I contact them and said, hey, can I get this repaired? They say, yep, we'll send you a, a, um, a postal slip and stuff like that. Get it back in the mail and they shipped it back and it's been working great ever since. So um, warranty process with Bluetti was very easy. Um, I haven't had any warranty issues with Jackery yet, so, but I'll keep testing these units and I'll let you know if anything comes up. 
So I don't really think you can go wrong with either of these units, either the Bluetti or the Jackery. I think they're both great units. Uh, for what I was doing in the caravan, they seem to operate fantastically for what I want to do. I really think instead of doing like a full integrated system in your van, if you've got an older van that may be say 5, 10, 10 years old or something like that, and you want to integrate some sort of power system in it to kind of keep up with what we're doing these days in terms of uh, induction and air fryers and running the AC when it's too hot, these units could definitely do that. You just have to have some sort of big solar system on the roof of your van. So if you're not scared to spend, say, a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred bucks on fitting a big solar system on your van's roof, then one of these units could definitely do what you want to do if you're going to run those high appliances every single day. If you're not going to do that, then you're probably going to want to look at uh, maybe at least a few solar panels or some portable panels from either Bluetti or Jackery to obviously keep that thing topped up. If you're running just the bare basics in your caravan, uh, maybe a fridge and some lights and things like that, one of these units could last you weeks um, if you've just got a 100 watt panel out chilling. So ultimately the decision's yours, whatever one you choose, I don't think you can really go wrong. It's just those personal preferences that you want uh, in your portable power station as to what you're actually going to do with it. So down in the description there'll be links to also my website as well. You can guys can grab some merch and stuff on there, help the channel out. And there'll also be links there to Jackery and Bluetti's websites if you want to check out one of these power stations for your setup and getting off grid. Anyway guys, that's it from me and I'll catch you in the next one. See you later.